You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, and this is Food for Life. It's our pleasure to have Heather Barrow in the studio with us. Hey, Heather. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks. Good. Yeah. Well, so, what are we what are we talking about today? Uh, well, last month we talked about stress, and there's just so much to say about the topic. I thought we could make it into into two shows. So this is stress part two this morning. All right. Well, I mean, who does not experience some form of stress in their life? So exactly. That is um, probably a popular topic. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I think I mentioned last time, um, you know, back in the day, you know, when we were hunters and gatherers, we, a stressor might be like coming across a wild animal where we have to get into that fight or flight response and that adrenaline and the cortisol is being released, which gives, um, you know, releases glucose into the blood. So you have that energy to, you know, run for your life or fight. Um, but today, we're getting that every day. So with modern technology, you know, the internet, emails piling up, we experience that fight or flight response all the time. All the time, don't we? So, um, yes, we need to look at managing, you know, our stress levels and, and what we're allowing to, you know, to come before us every day. Um, but there's things that we can do to help control it as well ourselves mm. um, because stress has a huge impact on the body so it's affecting you know us physically and emotionally um, you know a lot of clients say oh yeah you know I'm a, a clinical nutritionist so I, I look at everything and I look at um, bowel health and they say yeah I get like really loose bowels and I might go up to like five times a day and you know stress alone can have that impact you know, like right before yeah. you're about to public speak and you get those butterflies and you have to, you know, go to the toilet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, really common. That's um, quite inconvenient as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I think we talked about last time how, you know, stress also um, has a physical impact in that it does deplete, you know, your B vitamins from the body. So you need your B vitamins um, for energy. Mm. Um, it, also for, you know, liver health and thyroid health. Um, and it depletes calcium and magnesium from the body, which are kind of your calming. Um, you know, calcium helps you fall asleep. Magnesium keeps you asleep, um, especially for women, you know, menopausal age or, or past that. Um, calcium and magnesium are hugely, hugely important. So stress can really impact those levels and um, they can really disrupt your sleep. Mm. And I'm sure countless other things as well. I mean, are, aren't those minerals essential for just functioning of the body as well? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the heart, relaxing your blood vessel walls, um, bone health. Yeah, mm. the list goes on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so lots of different reactions to stress, um, mental effects, you know, inability to concentrate, memory, recall, focus. Yeah. Um, so just a few there, um, and even behavioral effects. So it might mean you, you might be one of those that actually eat more, but some people end up eating less. Right. Um, that could be an effect. Um, already mentioned sleep, um, and really just the lack of being able to prioritize, and then you know some of your other responsibilities might fall by the wayside. Right. And there was uh, now. I just I read something interesting that uh, that women can be more affected by stress than men. Is that true? I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, maybe it could be. Mm. Um, I think it does depend on the individual. And yeah, but uh, maybe men uh, deal with stress differently, which might be more effective. Mm. I know, or it might be the types of stressors. So women being you know, the caregiver and, you know, taking care of, you know, some of the household responsibilities, maybe they feel that they have more from different angles. That and women sense. can multitask too. <laughs> so they can think about all those stressors. Yeah, we juggle a lot, don't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that could be true. Mm. Um, but some other side effects, uh, thyroid function. So, oh, right. you know, people don't actually realize that stressors can make you gain weight because it impacts your thyroid. So like I said, your stress glands are your adrenals and they're the size of walnuts and they sit right back here, kind of in the middle of your back on top of your kidneys. 
And so those little glands are responding to the levels of stress that you experience every day and they're releasing that cortisol, cortisone and adrenaline. Um, and by releasing too much, you know, pumping too much, if someone's constantly stressed, you know, maybe there's someone sick and a loved one's sick and um, they're trying to pay their bills and, your, you know, your bills and so many things can pile up. Yeah. All of that excess stress hormone interferes with your thyroid, um, which is your butterfly gland organ that sits right here mm -hmm. and is responsible for your weight and metabolism. Mm -hmm. um, and it specifically interferes with the conversion of your thyroid hormone. So there's a couple thyroid hormones and it has to be converted from T4 to T3 um, to be usable and stress interferes with that. So, you know, lots of people with um, autoimmune conditions such as Hashimoto's, mm. which is a thyroid autoimmune condition, um, stress can be a huge factor to, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple things that you can do um, right off the bat um, is avoid um, stressors, like physical stressors, what you eat. Um, obviously anything that the body doesn't recognize well actually that you don't recognize so if you're mm -hmm. if you're buying a food a food <laughs> and um, you know it's got a label and you're looking at that label and you think well gosh I can't even pronounce that word or what is red number 40 right. you know if you don't know what that is your body's not going to know what that is either yeah, and it's not going to recognize it yeah that's a good point um, yeah and if it doesn't recognize it you know those enzymes um, won't be able to break it down yeah and when when foods aren't broken down if they're not even real you know natural foods they become toxic yeah and they can get stored in your tissues and you know that's a whole nother topic about detoxing and cleansing um, but that that's a stressor so one thing you can do is avoid foods with um, additives mm -hmm. you know preservatives colorings um, another one is sugars so too much sugar is certainly a stressor and of course sugar you know leads to inflammation in the body um, so for women you're looking at 35 grams of sugar a day or maybe six teaspoons um, and you need to you do need to include uh, fruit in that as well believe mm -hmm. it or not yeah um, it's a natural sugar but your body processes all sugars the same so whether you're getting it in an apple or banana or biscuit obviously the fruits better option um, but you still need to count that 10 grams of sugar in your apple towards your 35 grams a day definitely that sounds like a really good reason to read the labels too when you go to the supermarket I'm, I mean most people don't do that yeah I do it but um, yeah yeah you often find me in the grocery store um, if there's if I see something new like I think um, some organic rice crackers came out a few months ago by Sears Organic and mm -hmm. I thought oh and I just stand there and I just look at the label mm -hmm. you know look at what what ingredients are in there how much salt how much sugar um, it's important to, to look at what you're putting in your body yeah it is isn't it and just mm -hmm. because uh, something might say organic on the box doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be good for you we'd like to think that it, it is but yeah, yeah. you're right mm. and I think um, marketers are getting a little bit more crafty yes and what they do like uh, for instance I'm from the state so one of my favorite foods not the healthiest is pizza right you can obviously make your own healthy pizzas at home but yes. um, also a while back I, I went in and I saw that they had a sourdough pizza it yep. said sourdough mm -hmm. base and I thought oh this is great sourdough and I looked at the labels and I zoned in and it was like point oh five percent sourdough oh so it wasn't even like one percent it just had a little bit in mm. there and they big label across the whole pizza so don't be deceived <laughs> either oh no yeah really have a nice look at that i think i've bought that myself and it's yeah <laughs> just see if we go yeah looks can be deceiving can't they? that's right yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, so watch your food additives, watch your sugar, um, and then the um, wonderful cup of coffee. Yeah. So if you're someone that is really stressed and you're going through a lot, chances are you are drinking a lot of coffee as well because you're tired. Yeah. You know, you're 
all these nutrients are being depleted, your thyroid's a bit sluggish, you're, you know, you're tired, um, and you're trying to make up for that with caffeine, mm -hmm. but that's actually the last thing you want to do. Makes it worse. It does. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think of coffee, caffeine, um, what does it do? It perks you up, you know, it gives you that energy. Um, but to do that, it's, it's releasing more cortisol, more adrenaline. So it's actually that caffeine is stressing those adrenal glands. Mm. Um, so if you think of your coffee, it's like a cup of stress hormone. Right. That's what you're doing. Right. Wow. Never yeah. really thought of it that way. But uh, yeah, and I, th I think a lot of people just want that quick fix and they don't realize, is it, you know, that I mean, there, there's obviously a more permanent mm. way, but probably takes maybe a bit more time than the cup yeah. of coffee gives you that instant kick which is which is why you know most people go for that yeah and yeah. it does do the trick but in the long run you're causing more damage and eventually your adrenals are just gonna say I've just had it I'm flatlined I'm exhausted I'm going to sleep <laughs> you know and then you wake up in the morning and you think I'm exhausted and every day you're exhausted no matter how much sleep you get and you're dragging yourself throughout the day yeah and that's called adrenal fatigue yeah and that's when you have to see a healthcare professional, you know, someone like myself, um, and get some real support for those stress glands to nurture them back to life. Yeah, yeah, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been through that myself mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. 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 So looking at diet and lifestyle and... Definitely. And even talking to someone, you know, might help a psychologist or a friend or a counselor and identifying those stressors and, um, you know, seeing how you can control your response or how maybe that stressor can change mm. it's a really good good thing to do yeah mm. um, another thing I think we touched on last time was the role that stress plays in your gut so if you look at the gut um, you know if we laid it out <laughs> it's the surface area of the tennis court um, so that's a lot of surface area with thousands of um, folds going up and down. Um, and in that surface area, you should have about three kilos of good bacteria. Wow. So what stress does is it um, changes that balance between the good and, and the bad bacteria. And it also increases yeast, um, which we all have in our guts, but it increases the growth of yeast. Um, and that some people listening might be familiar with that. Um, mm. It's candida. Right, yeah. Um, very, very common. I see it a lot in my clients. Mm. Um, and it can start off as a, as a low acute case, um, but more stress, you know, more caffeine to make up for it and sugars. And then you've got a chronic case of candida um, that gets worse and worse. Um, and to get rid of it, really, you need a pretty good protocol if you've got a pretty chronic case of candida. So that's one thing I do see a lot um, in clients and I can help with is an overgrowth of yeast in the gut. Mm. Oh, that's good. Um, and another thing stress does is it changes your uh, stomach acid. Mm. So I've talked a lot in the past about your digestive system. Um, you know, and it's it's up here. So what happens up here is going to impact what happens down here. So um, you know, your digestive system. The whole point is for it to break your foods down properly. Um, so by the time food gets to that surface area of that tennis court in your gut, it's absorbed through the gut wall into the bloodstream, and then the billions of cells get those nutrients. So um, it extracts those vitamins and minerals hopefully from, that you're eating from the right foods. Um, but stress, it puts a, a kink in that uh, conveyor belt, if you will, of the digestive system. So what it does is it, um, it stops that production of stomach acid. Mm. So kind of step two, you know, after you chew your food really well and it goes to your stomach, you should have that hydrochloric acid. Right. Um, and it's quite acidic. You know, if you took it out of the stomach and dropped it on the table, it would burn a hole. But you've got this nice mucosa protective barrier in the stomach. Mm. Um, so when you're stressed, you're not producing as much of that um, stomach acid. That's an important step, too, in breaking your food down. Um, so particularly all your meats and your proteins need a lot of stomach acid to break down. 
Wow, so if you're really stressed out, you're not digesting your food. No, mm. and then what happens, you know, you once food leaves the stomach and it goes into the um, intestinal tract, you've got these large pieces of food and your body says, well, I can't get the nutrients properly from them. So you end up with nutrient deficiencies. And then in the gut, you have these large pieces of food sitting and that inflammation starts to develop and bacterial overgrowth. And then you, it's kind of like a domino cascading effect. And all of this goes all the way back just to stress. Yeah. It, so it's a huge, a huge physical um, effect on the entire body. Huge, yeah. Um, and a lot of people can start developing food intolerances from that as well. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, just the change in the gut bacteria, the change in your digestive flow and, and not breaking that food down. Um, yeah, it can definitely lead to different in intolerances and sensitivities. Wow. Do you think that that's maybe a, a reason why suddenly there's so much food intolerance? I mean, so many people now, whereas, say, 30, 40 years ago, I mean, you, you never really heard about that, but now everybody is, you know, yeah, oh, gluten-free or dairy-free or something or the other. and Yeah, there's some, yeah, definitely more stressors. Yeah. And I think it is it's having an effect. Mm. Um, I see a lot of people that come in and complain about, um, you know, bloated, painful stomach. Oh, it hurts to touch. It's really hard and tender. Um, bowel irregularity, whether it's constipation or loose stools. Um, and they said, oh, I never had it before, you know, haven't changed my diet. And then we, I asked them questions around lifestyle and, you know, sure enough, you know, they're going through a stressful event or, they're, you know, they're trying to move or sell their house or just something um, that's happened. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely attribute it back to some life event, some stressor. Wow. That's really eye-opening, actually. So, I mean, I think people um, obviously if you have a food intolerance uh, I would imagine you have to be really careful about what you eat but it sounds like you should also make it a priority to to reduce the stress in your life yeah go that's what I'm all I'm about is you know let's get to the root problem let's go to the source so yeah you know we're not putting a band-aid on this we're yes we might be helping support your adrenal glands through this stressful time but what is what is causing it yeah let's see if we can fix it um, you know, I, one thing I like to tell clients is um, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Libby, and she talks a lot about um, your nervous system, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, affects your stress. And you've got two branches. So one is your parasympathetic, mm -hmm. which is your rest and digest, which is where we want to be. Yeah. Rest and digest. Let all the energy and the blood go to breaking your food down. Then you have your sympathetic, which is your fight or flight. Um, and that's where we are all the time and blood's going to the limbs, you know, energy, move or fight. Um, and one way to affect your nervous system and which um, branch you're actually using is um, through your breath. So throughout the day we, we do tend to breathe very shallow, very quickly. Mm. Um, we don't really stop unless you know you're into yoga or meditation or something and actually, you know, take in a breath, hold it and exhale. Um, so this is breathing from your diaphragm, where you inhale and you allow your stomach to rise. So you do that for five seconds, and then you hold, and then you exhale for five. So preferably in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just try practicing that even for five times. And it's amazing mm. how much more relaxed you feel yeah. and calm. And that's what, it, it actually activates that parasympathetic branch of the nervous system. So it's more of that rest and digest. Right. Good time to practice that is also right before a meal. Oh, really? So, you know, we, we eat on the run and, you know, we might have five minutes or ten minutes to eat or sometimes we don't even, we're so busy we don't even eat lunch. True. But I always like to tell my clients, even if you only have ten minutes, find somewhere to sit down, sit up straight, take some deep breaths, you know, look at your food, smell it, because that gets the enzymes flowing um, for digestion. Right. And, and chew your food and take those breaths before you eat. That's great. It's Calm. so simple, too. Yeah. It's such an easy thing. Yep, and I say it to myself as well, because sometimes I'm eating really fast and I'm like, wait a minute, let's just close my eyes, take a few deep breaths, and just chew that food. Yeah, enjoy the food. Yeah. Relax. You know, you. You're putting that fuel in to your body. Um, you know, you don't want to be shoving it in. 
Um, and I think too often we actually neglect self-care. Um, we do you know? because that's the other thing that's really easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people think of it as a luxury. Yeah. Um, but really, it, we should get it's back a necessity. to it being a priority. Yeah. yeah. You need to look after yourself so you can continue to, you know, work and take care of the kids and manage the house. And So true indeed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's just become, uh, I think it's become part of the culture, which is, you know, maybe why it's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, f I'm, from the, I'm from the States, the East Coast, and it's a very um, fast culture. Yeah. Um, and it, it always seems like you have to schedule time way in advance to get together with friends. And moving to New Zealand, I thought, wow, it's, you know, it's much more slower and chill. Um, but I'm finding it just seems like more and more. It just seems to be picking up. And oh, it's changing here too. I mean, yeah. I, I'm also from the same part of the world you are, and I, I oh, okay. felt that um, that here I really loved the the slower pace. It's so suited to me. But yet now I feel like it has, um, yeah, it's it's not that much different anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's speeding up, and it's. Um, yeah, not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm hoping we hold on to some of, um, you know, the the values here. It, it, even like with the shops, you know, they close at five. In the yes. states, they're you know, you know, they're open till nine thirty. Malls and yeah, true. Um, but yeah. here, yeah, it's everything kind of quiets down, and I feel like it kind of enables us to kind of go back home and relax and that's true and that's good and I hope it stays that way I yeah uh, I hope that doesn't change because even those those people that are working in those places they need to go home and rest exactly so, yeah yeah mm. um, so yeah so pretty much my message is um, you know look after yourself make yourself a priority um, and no you know stress it does really have an impact on the body and don't underestimate it um, and if you find yourself if you're listening out there and you say oh yeah that's totally me you know I'm waking up and uh, you know I go to bed early and I I sleep okay sometimes I have disrupted sleep but I'm just feeling drained and exhausted um, and uh, you know throughout the day I'm sluggish I'd rather just go to bed yeah constantly hitting that wall you know the, I'm telling you, you're probably adrenally fatigued yep. and you need some support. Mm. Um, and right now, the first steps you can do are stop your coffee. If you're a coffee drinker, uh, switch to decaf. You mm -hmm. know, you still get the taste of coffee if you like that without the caffeine. Reduce your sugar levels. Um, if you drink fizzy or, you know, and if there's any energy drinks, please don't drink those anymore. Yeah. Um, and watch your food intake, watch what you're putting into your body and take care of yourself. And, um, you know, there's lots of great herbal remedies out there as well. And lavender, obviously, everyone is familiar with that is a relaxant. Take a bath, listen to some classical music, focus on your breathing, find some quiet space, allow time for yourself. Yeah. Um, pick up your favorite book that you've been wanting to read. It's really going to do wonders um, for your body physically and mentally mm. yeah it's good to uh, it's good to make a, a habit of that isn't it I mean mm -hmm. instead of just one time just make it a, a regular thing absolutely yeah so if somebody wanted to come and and see you for extra support where would they where would they kind of how would they get a hold of you yeah so I'm located at G's pharmacy in Teradel mm -hmm. so I have my clinic there um, Monday to Friday um, I can do weekends if need be as well um, so you can give me a ring I'm happy to have a, a chat about any issues see if I can help you um, my phone number is 027-812-5071 um, I have a brand new website so I'm really excited about that mm -hmm. just went live last week and that's um, www.foodforlife uh, so that's F-O-R foodforlife.co.nz and cool. you can email me too at heather at foodforlife.co.nz Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Well, um, that was great having you and uh, we, we wish everybody a stress-free week. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> okay.